Now, I've been anticipating this business-focused laptop for quite a while. You know, I am a fan of the ThinkPad line, of course, when it comes to business-focused laptops. But I also love the EliteBook line from HP. So I recently took delivery of the HP EliteBook 840 Aero G8. Yeah, it's a big mouthful, but it's a definitely a laptop that does pack a punch. It's very light with its magnesium alloy chassis, comes with nice display options, and it's powered by the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor under the hood. Let's see if this all comes together to make this a winner. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the HP EliteBook 840 Aero G8. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by HP, I'm not being sponsored by HP, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, HP is not getting copy approval. They're seeing this video for the first time just like you. Now this review unit is on loan from HP and once this review is done, I'll be sending it back. Pricing for the EliteBook 840 Aero G8 starts at $1662.96. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. And it's good to see that HP once again is going with that eco-friendly packaging. Now you do get some documentation along with a setup guide and warranty information. And of course you get that 65 watt USB-C power adapter. It's pretty compact. It's the one we've been seeing from HP as of late. Holding the unit for the first time and the first thing that strikes you is just how thin and light this is at 2.5 pounds or 1.13 kilograms. They were able to get it this light with that magnesium alloy that they're using. That in turn saves some weight. So this is going to be extremely portable for that business traveler who needs to take something thin and light on the go. And with that optional 5G, this is going to be a really nice option for the road warrior. Okay, let's check out the ports. On the left side is a Kensington lock port, two USB-A ports, and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. Moving over to the right side is two Thunderbolt 4 ports that are USB 4 that do data charge and display out, one HDMI 2.0B port, and your AC power port. Also on that right side is the pop-out tray for the optional 5G SIM card. And the one missing port that stands out to me, no SD or micro SD card reader. Also missing, no RJ45 Ethernet port either, probably because it's really thin and light. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, one thing I've noticed the last couple of years, the EliteBook keyboards have been rivaling that of the ThinkPad keyboards, which I think are the best in the business. So really kudos to HP for making the keyboards really good. You get good tactile feedback, good key travel, and you don't feel like your fingers are going to bottom out. Now, this does have a multi-stage backlight, which allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment, and it worked well. And it has a glass precision touchpad that works very well. There are physical mouse buttons. I thought two-finger scrolling was buttery smooth, and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on that front. And just like the ThinkPad line, this has the track point. It was very responsive as well. Now, HP makes it easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is loosen the captive Phillips head screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that simple. Now, once inside, you'll notice that there is a single fan for cooling. We'll get into thermals in just a little bit. And there's also a 53 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times in just a little bit as well. But as far as what's user upgradable, there are two sodium slots for you to upgrade the RAM. They're using DDR4 3200 RAM running in dual channel mode, and it is working well. Now, my unit has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. And the SSD is also user upgradable. That means you could upgrade it down the road. Now, as far as the included SSD, it did well in the reads and writes, as you can see from the crystal disk mark results. 
It has Wi-Fi 6 along with a Bluetooth 5 combo. And the good news is it's socketed in. It's not soldered in. That means you can upgrade it down the road. And as far as the performance of both the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, no complaints on either front. Everything working as advertised. And for those road warriors, there is the optional 5G, which I definitely recommend if you do a lot of traveling and need an always-on connection when you're on the go. Now, when it comes to the display, there are a number of options, too many to go over here. So check it out over at the website. Again, link in the description below. But what HP sent over was their 14 inch low power display. It's a full HD resolution. That's 1920 by 1080. Yes, that means this is a 16 to nine aspect ratio, which I was kind of hoping was a move to a 16 to 10. Not exactly what we're getting here, but 16 to 9, of course, is optimized for viewing media, watching Netflix, Amazon, and YouTube is really great because you don't get any black bars on the top and the bottom. But having said that, this is also a very bright display. They claim 400 nits in terms of the brightness, low power display, so you won't really skimp on the battery life. It still will do well in that department, and I'll show you that in a moment. But as far as the brightness that I measured, I measured 385, which is close to the 400 nits that they do claim. So that's been pretty good. So this is going to be good for both indoor and outdoor scenarios and the fact that this has an anti-glare coating on it or a matte display means you won't get a lot of glare or reflections and that's always very good especially when it comes to productivity you're looking at really deep blacks good white point it also has excellent contrast and a very low delta e score of 0.28 that means this is a very color accurate display and it also covers the color gamut pretty well it's 94 percent srgb 71 percent adobe rgb 71 percent of the dci p3 wide color gamut and 65 percent ntsc making this a decent choice if you want to do lightroom photoshop and of course video editing so this is the uh, front-facing camera, of course, the webcam on the HP EliteBook 840 Aero G8. That's a rather long name, but a very premium business-focused laptop to rival that of the ThinkPads, of course. Uh, this is a 720p 30 frames per second webcam. It has a shutter switch to allow you to turn it off for more security and privacy. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. This is also an infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. Again, I want to know what you think about the video quality and the audio quality as well. In addition to the Windows Hello infrared webcam, there's also a fingerprint scanner located below the keyboard on the right side, set up was easy, and registered my finger each and every time I used it. Okay, let's talk performance, and this has the Core i7 1185 G7. We've seen this one before, the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor from Intel. It also has integrated Iris XE graphics. And as you can see from the benchmark numbers, this is performing pretty much as we'd expect from this type of chip. We've seen these numbers before. We've seen this chipset before. But the difference with this one is, of course, they went with a more quiet experience. We didn't get a lot of fan noise on this, and therefore the performance was tempered down just a tad you could definitely do some gaming if you lower the settings you'll definitely get playable frame rates on some of the more popular titles but of course this is not a dedicated gaming laptop have your expectations in check when you go into this but of course you could always add an external gpu via one of the two thunderbolt 4 ports that's another option for you and when I ran my Prime 95 stress test, I noticed the CPU would turbo boost up to 4.3 gigahertz. That would last for about two seconds when it reached a core temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Then it would drop down to a more manageable 2.1 gigahertz to maintain a cooler temperature of 83 degrees Celsius. What does that tell us? They wanted to keep the temperatures in check and they didn't want it to get overly hot where it would overheat. And as I mentioned, the single fan doesn't get overly loud, which is a pretty quiet experience, which you're going to like. And it also doesn't get overly hot when it comes to the surface temperatures, even under heavy load. Okay, let's talk about the battery life. And this has a three cell 53 watt hour battery and it did 11 hours and 33 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that mean in real world mixed usage? I think you're looking at anywhere from nine to 10 hours, depending of course on what you're doing. So your mileage may vary. And it takes about 90 minutes to get you a full charge with the included 65 watt USB-C power adapter. 
Now, the speakers, now I thought the audio quality was very good, especially for a 14 inch business laptop. Pretty good mids, pretty decent in terms of the volume, and there was a hint of bass, not something we normally see on a business focused laptop. They did a good job when it comes to the audio. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the HP EliteBook 840 Aero G8? Ooh, that's a long name. Uh, here for 2021, I actually do like it. I think it's got a really nice, bright anti-glare display, 14-inch display. I love the fact that this has a whole host of upgradability, upgradable RAM, SSD, wireless LAN, excellent keyboard, responsive precision touchpad, long battery life. It runs extremely quiet, so that's going to be good for those trying to get work done. Solid build and design. I love the optional 5G, and I like the thin and light chassis with that magnesium alloy use to keep the weight down negatives here there's no 4k or oled option this is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio instead of the 16 to 10 we'd like to see and it has a bit of a cramped up and down arrow keys some may not like that but there are no real deal breakers here ladies and gentlemen i'm going to give this a score of 89 percent making the hp elite book 840 arrow g8 definitely worth your money so what do you think about the HP EliteBook 840 Aero G8? Yes, it is a mouthful, but definitely worth it in a lot of respects, especially if you are that road warrior that needs an always-on connection with the optional 5G. The fact that it's very light with its magnesium alloy chassis, making it easy to take with you on the go, is another win in that column. Now, it's powered by the 11th gen Tiger Lake processor. My review unit comes with the Core i7 1185G7, and it performed pretty much as we'd expect, a little less performance than we've seen with others with that chipset, simply because they wanted to go for a more quiet experience for the productivity uh audience and that's exactly what you get very quiet in terms of the fan noise uh it doesn't get overly hot either but it definitely doesn't perform up to the level like others with that same chipset something to keep in mind but not terrible it'll be great for productivity work microsoft office email web browsing it all works fine battery life was good on this as well you're getting about 11 and a half hours on my continuous web surfing test over wi-fi at 150 nits Real world usage, you're looking at anywhere from nine to 10 hours, of course, depending on what you're doing with this laptop. So please keep that in mind. What's your take on this? Is this something you wanna pick up as far as if you're a business user or is this part of your fleet if you are the person making the ordering on these? Of course, you probably can get a discount from HP if you do buy these in bulk. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Again, I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.